guys, guys, guys. Are you feeling my 90s vibe? Mm -hmm. I'm a 90s girl. Mm -hmm. International girl. I'm a 90s girl. Uh, I'm a 90s, I'm an 80s girl, girl. <laughs> Okay guys, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in again. I am so grateful for all your support. Thank you for everyone who reached out to me following my video from last week. If you haven't seen it, here's the link to it. Okay, go watch it. Support your girl. And if you're new and you're just stumbling on this channel, hey, welcome to this family. My name is Wuna and I basically created this platform to provide a safe heaven somewhat to any woman out there, whatever age it is you are, a stage in life, but you are going through infertility, you're welcome to join and by all means, everyone is welcome basically. <laughs> so, um, I'm looking to document my journey through infertility, hence why I thought I created this YouTube channel to render as a means of support to other women um, and friends uh, who probably are going through this very, very difficult, somewhat daunting and challenging um, situation in life because it's not something that is for the faint hearted definitely not for the faint at it um because there's no school or um theories or anything that prepares you for it it's it's just life as it is and you just have to just get on with it so this is me um just saying hey i'm here and um we can do this together okay all right cool stuff so i'm hoping that through my you know videos i'm able to create support um change the narrative and the stigma around um women who are going through infertility as you know i'm of a black descent a black race i'm from africa to be precise and um you know infertility is not something that um the society really understands how to deal with we i mean there has been changes i must give it to us i'm from nigeria originally i'm a nigerian british youtuber based in london so um you know back home in my home country nigeria it is really really i would say you know it's tougher as opposed to me living out here in uk one of the reasons why I would say it's a bit tougher for, or more difficult for people like me who are going through infertility is the fact that they don't really have access to medical care like I do and even if you can't afford it, you still don't really have access to care, that kind of support that you'd really need to see you through. It's one thing to have access to gynees and doctors and all. I think that aspects of dealing with the psychological, the mental part of dealing with infertility can be really, really daunting in terms of getting help and support out there to, you know, to, to see you through the trying times. Because, um, I mean, I know statistics have shown that, you know, um, treatments in Nigeria um, are actually the success rates are way better compared to some of the other counterparts um, even here in the UK um, and I can't I testify the reason why that is but look good news is great news any good news any positivity that we can get around it it's it's just you know another thumbs up for us okay so guys today I, I mentioned in my previous video about July being Fibroid Awareness Month. And some of you might have heard about it, some of you might know about it, some of you probably haven't even heard about it until now, okay. So guys, I want to address some misconception from the last video. I wasn't trying to tell you all nothing, no, because if you were reading my description, 
my description underneath the video you would know that I wasn't telling anyone that I was expecting I had quite a few people reach out to me even close family members saying oh god you were looking radiant you were glowing you were this I could see your tummy guys by the time I hit recording, I didn't realize my whole belly situation was showing. And look, I didn't have the strength to record that video again because my videos are one take. And I thought, yeah, what, what's there to hide really? That is how my tummy looks. Um, two, three weeks in the whole month, I look bloated. I look like I'm pregnant basically and it's because of the condition um, the fibroid that I am dealing with that you know causes that uh, you know especially you know days leading to my menstrual cycle during it and after it I look all bloated you know like I'm just ready to pop um, I'm so pale because you know um, because of the fibroid I bleed a lot so I'm anemic as well so I've lost a lot of blood hence why I'm, I was looking pale and coupled with the fact that I was ill a couple of weeks ago and I've been on antibiotics and you guys know antibiotics are really strong they kind of drain us out you know your your blood y'all so literally I feel my blood count was lower than normal <laughs> this past few weeks but as you can see I haven't been out so I won't even say I got a tan or anything but I think my body complexion is coming back wouldn't you agree I don't know uh, but hey there is nothing to share yet honestly and I can't even tell you guys if of a truth if when I eventually get pregnant that I will be sharing it almost immediately with you guys I might share it eventually maybe it was the end when I know yes I'm about to pop I don't know why maybe it's the Nigerian in me like you know those things that superstition about you know just hiding yourself and everything I don't know but that is not really my personality you guys know I'm like right in your face and everything so I don't know maybe we should take a poll what do you guys think do you think when I eventually get pregnant I would be one who will be screaming on the mountain top so I'll be one of those people who just zip their mouths and not say anything until I come up with some baby or babies and I'm like oh the babies have finally arrived let me know what you think <laughs> honestly I don't know and I, I you know I'm a very spiritual person and by all means if I have any message or God spoke to me to be in you know seclusion by all means I mean it's better safe than sorry I would what would it cost me to you know just take myself away and be separated for a time for a, a greater you know purpose and because you know as in the Bible there are several women that were told to you know go stay away hide yourself do this and all that and it wasn't in all cases so I'm not one of those people who be like mm, I can't really say honestly I, I can't I can't I don't know I don't know if I would be really upfront and say guys finally it's happened I am four weeks pregnant I'm two weeks pregnant I don't know but you know you guys won't know you would know eventually someone even refer to me to <laughs> Mama Chanel yes 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 someone has been watching my videos like yeah Mama Chanel she's here <laughs> So by the time Chanel and you know her brothers and whoever comes along, y'all will know. Okay, all right. So let's get on to the topic today. I wanted to talk about fibroid because you know I don't want to miss out on the opportunity um, since it's the month that's been dedicated to create the awareness around fibroids. Okay, guys. Now I'm going to tell you briefly. Most of this information you can find it online anyways, um, they're all available online, you can read up on it but I'm not, I'm not like, I have a friend that you can just tell her something now now and she'll go and find this for you now, like she's the school scholar of Google, <laughs> my royal correspondent, you know yourself. <laughs> But I, on the other hand, I'm just skeptical about going and reading up stuff and everything because I just feel like then you find some positive and you find some negative. But based on my personal experience and what I know, because some people have the symptoms, some people don't. So please, I am not about to share doom and gloom or 
make anyone worried or scared because some people do have fibroids some people have you know several medical conditions and they've gone on to have a family so yes you know the doctors will say what they want to say by the end of the day as a spiritual person the report i believe is my god's report you know god so doctor can say i've got fibroid i've got endometriosis i've got cyst i've got that and that, that it's fine yeah you know call them by their names and by the stripe of christ jesus we are healed amen <laughs> okay so now enough long talking i just want to quickly you know just talk through um fibroids and it's um some of its symptoms and um some of the treatments as well and hopefully someone will be educated and blessed i had an interesting conversation with one of my friends whom i went to high school with and she's like oh i don't remember you in secondary school having pain and everything yes I was a late bloomer yes I was a late bloomer I finished my secondary school I think in May or is it July when did you write your exam yeah May June exam in it I finished that in uh, 1996 so I was 16 when I finished I didn't start my menstrual cycle until I was 16 so thankfully I kind of like at um, I can't even imagine how my life would be like if I was going through school and having those heavy bleeding. Man. And at the time, I was angry that I did because I was one of those people who, yeah, yeah, I said it, late bloomer, like late bloomer. Like, I literally had to beg my stepmom to buy me a bra before I graduated so that I can wear a bra too because everyone was wearing she I usually get them bra tops you know that is you know bra tops that I don't know how to explain it's like those um they look like those stuff you wear for spot wears and everything that was what I used to get to wear under my uniform but it's like no I'm graduating I want to wear a bra like everyone you're like you don't need it you've not grown into it but that bless her heart she got me one I cannot forget it, a white pair that we got from Tedrusha Market in Yaba. <laughs> and then started by joining to Adolf Wood. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I didn't start my period until later. And, I'm, you know, now I'm grateful for it. At the time, I was really concerned, wondering, well, everyone is growing up. Everyone is having this experience. I'm not. I can remember then in school when, you know, some of the girls would get stained. Um, the uniform will get stained from the menstrual cycle and everyone will be fussing all around them giving them cardigans to cover up and all I didn't have that experience and um, thankfully I didn't know what God was saving me from because imagine if I because I knew I think I knew a girl or two who used to have very painful period and she would be missing from school for a couple of days and then she'll come back and talk about her ordeal how she was in pain and she you know she had to take blood transfusion and all of that but she's fine now at the time I heard about her she's had two kids so she's done one so you see it's not really like your fate is sealed even if you have these conditions okay guys it's just good to know about it so we are more aware and we show empathy so sometimes when you feel like your friends are just out of it and you're wondering why is this one forming why is this one doing this maybe you know you don't know what it is they're going through i'm just saying because i know there are times that i just don't i don't feel like anything and it's because of the you know the symptoms of the fibroid okay now i'm talking too much i feel like i'm faffing too much now so so a few facts about fibroids fibroids are not cancerous no they're not they're, they're growths in the muscle area of the womb but they're not cancerous thankfully um but they're growths so um one of the biggest one i've had to take out was about 20 kg that they said was equivalent to the size of a five months pregnancy yes i had to take one that big out in um was it 2013 no it was i did that 